This is a worked example of the, the calculations a successive approximation converter would do if it was converting an analog voltage into a digital output. The method that the successive approximation technique uses is to test each bit in turn, to switch on each bit and see what impact that would have on the output. We keep working along from most significant bit to least significant bit until the output equivalent matches the input. So we're going to do a worked example here uh, where we have an input of 0 0.8 volts going into a converter that can take a range of 0 to 5 volts. So it's slightly less than one fifth of the input. So what digital output is that going to give us? It's an 8-bit converter. So the maximum output it can give us is all ones. The minimum uh, is all zeros. All ones corresponds to 255. And that 255 <coughs> would correspond to a 5 volt input. But we've only got a 0.8 volt input, so slightly less than a fifth. So we're going to get some figure below about 50 as the output uh, in digital terms. So let's apply the standard method using this table template below. Uh, so we test the most significant bit first. So we put a 1 into the bit 7 position and a 0 into all the other positions. It'd be a lot quicker if we weren't typing, but uh, I'll do it as fast as I can. So the running total in decimal here, uh, what is a 1 in bit 7 worth? Well, bit 7 in a binary system is worth 128. So I put in 128 there. <coughs> What's the equivalent analog voltage of 128. Well, we have to take this 128 as a proportion of one of 255, which is the maximum, and apply that to the input range of 5 volts. So uh, we'll see a couple of examples of this and you'll become familiar with it. Um, so the first example here, we're going to take 128, divide that by 255, which is the maximum, and see what proportion that gives us. It gives us 0 0.5, which is approximately half. And then we have to multiply that by the 5 volt input. So half of 5 volts will be 2.5 volts. So 2.5 volts. Uh, so should we keep that bit on or not? Uh, no, we shouldn't, because it gives us the equivalent of 2.5 volts, and our input is only 0 0.8 volts. So we don't keep that bit. So the answer here is, uh, do we keep the bit? No. Um, and therefore, in our result, we put a zero there, and on the next line, we don't keep that one, we put a zero there. Now we test the next bit, which is bit six, and I'm gonna copy these guys here, just to speed me up a bit, control C, control V, uh, and I can also copy this result here down the ways, because we're keeping, uh, no, actually, I don't know that we're keeping this second bit yet. I can't do that safely yet. Okay, so this bit here is worth 64, and we weren't keeping the other bit, so the total here is actually just 64. <coughs> and what's that in terms of analog voltage? Let's get the calculator again. It's going to be 64 as a proportion of 255, so divided by 255, and we multiply that by 5 volts, because that's the maximum input range, and that gives us 1.25 volts. So I've got 1.25 volts. Do we keep that or not? We don't because it's still too big. If the, if we're looking to get 0 0.8 volts out. This would give us 1.25 volts out. So uh, we don't keep that. So we say no there. And we put a zero in this result bit. We're not keeping that bit. So that first bit is already rejected as zero. Second bit is going to be a zero. Let's test the third bit. Uh, so we put a one in there. A zero in the remaining bits for the moment until we test them. Okay, a one in this position is worth 32. Uh, so bit five in a binary system is worth 32 decimal. What's that in voltage terms in a five volt system? Uh, calculator needed again. It's 32 divided by 255 gives us a proportion. And we multiply that by five, uh, which is our voltage range. And that gives us zero point uh, 627. Uh, okay, 0 0.627. Uh, so that's actually less than 0 0.8 volts. So we do need that bit uh, because we need our output to reach 0 0.8 volts. 
uh, here was here's our 0 0.8 volts uh, input okay so we're going to keep that bit uh, so that means on the next column we keep that one and we record we record it in the final result uh, the first two were rejected so they're still zero and the remaining five bits well actually the remaining four bits no, nope, five bits, four bits, control C, control V, there's zero. We haven't tested them yet, but we are going to test this bit now. So we're now about to test bit four, but we keep bit five on because we need it. So here our total is a bit more interesting. It's a combination of two bits now. It's 32 and 16, which is 48. What's 48? It's a proportion of 255. Well, 48 divided by 255 multiplied by 5 is equal to... 0.94 volts and that's too large it's greater than our input of 0.8 volts so we're going to <laughs> we're going to reject that say no that means we don't keep that one we go back we put it as a zero in our answer uh, we do keep our previous previous results which was 001 and now we're going to test bit three which is worth eight units Zero, zero, zero. So we have eight here, and this is worth 32. That gives a total of 40. What's that in analog voltage terms? That should be point, not comma. Uh, so in analog terms, 40 as a fraction of 255 is 40 divided by 2.5, which is equal to this, and multiply that by, done something wrong there. Uh, it shouldn't be, it should be fractional, so let's cancel that. 40 divided by 255 is equal to us better and multiply that by <coughs> excuse me uh, multiply it by 5 I think something's still wrong yeah something I don't know what I'm doing wrong there let's try it one more time let's cancel the whole thing so I had 40 as a fraction of 255 and that's giving me 0 0.15, that's more realistic. Multiplied by 5 is equal to 0 0.78. And 0 0.78 is below uh, our input of 8, 0.8 volts, so we will keep this bit. We need it to make up uh, sufficient voltage on the output to match the input. Um, so we're going to keep that bit, which is now a 1. That goes down to the result. It's a 1. Uh, we'll copy our previous results. And we now test the next bit, which is bit 2, which is worth 4 units. And the other two bits of 0 until we test them. So our total weighted decimal now is 32 plus 8, which is 40, plus 4 is 44. 44 is a fraction of 255, is 44 divided by 255 equals and multiplied by 5 is 0 0.86 that's too large so we're not going to keep that we're going to reject it so no we're not keeping that so we put a zero in there we don't keep that one but we keep all our previous results and now we test the next bit which is the second last bit we're nearly there what's our weighting now it's 32 and it's 40 and 2 is 42 that's 42 is a proportion of 255 so 42 divided by 255 is equal to multiplied by 5 volts is equal to 0 0.823 0 0.82 will do us so that's too high we're not going to keep it so we put that bit back to a zero in our next test and also in our result and I forgot to put in the result from the previous one which should be a zero as well keep all our previous results and test the so that bit was zero for that test and for the very last bit uh, to test it we set it to one it gives us a total of 32 and 8 is 40 and 1 is 41 What's 41 is a proportion of 255. 41 divided by 255. We multiply that by 5 volts, which is our 
maximum input range, and that gives us 0 0.803, 0 0.803, which is still marginally too large, so we reject that bit as well. So we store a zero in our answer. And at this stage, we're finished. What's our answer? It's these eight digits across here. We've got, uh, we've worked out that 0 0.8 volts um, going into a 5 volt A to D converter gives us a value of, a 5 volt 8 bit converter gives us a result of 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0. And that's it.